Note to self, dopamine is not about happiness. Repeat, not about happiness. It's actually the sneaky little chemical behind everything. We're talking movement, sleep, motivation, reward, basically life. So yeah, it might be really useful to understand how dopamine actually works. May even change everything. And by the way, for those of you who are new, I'm Evie. I have a science degree in psychology. I've spent 10 years in academia, five of which dedicated for psychology. So I kind of know a little bit what I'm talking about and neuroscience was definitely my favorite. I really like talking about how our brain works and hopefully this video will turn out to be one of the useful ones. Fingers crossed. So what's dopamine? Okay, it's a molecule and it gets produced in your brain. So yeah, it's all in your brain, which doesn't mean it isn't real. It all begins with amino acid called tyrosine, which is then converted into L-dopa, which then becomes dopamine. So what you see here is the presynaptic neuron, which sends a signal to the postsynaptic neuron. And the gap between is the synaptic gap. And this is your simple dopamine transmission. And basically this, is the magic behind everything you say, do, or feel. Because this communication from one neuron to another, this exchange of neurotransmitters is how your brain functions, how your brain communicates to your body what to do, say, or feel. I'm gonna make a more elaborated video on this another time. And we make dopamine when we do hard things. The harder the thing is and the longer we do it, the more dopamine our brain makes, so we feel better for longer. And this is important for the next video on dopamine deficit state. But right now, let's dive into how dopamine can either build or ruin your life. And we're gonna focus on motivation and reward. As we said, dopamine is the fuel that your brain uses to get things done. And dopamine works in two ways, phasic and tonic transmissions. Tonic transmission looks like this slow, continuous release of dopamine in the brain that sets the baseline of your dopamine level. Phasic transmission is the surge of dopamine, so those high spikes. All right, let's take a real life example to make this more applicable and real. When you get a cue for reward, like thinking about getting pizza for dinner or a cake for dessert, this is triggering the phasic transmission, the spike of dopamine. Because, well, we associate sugary food with pleasure because sugary food is usually tasty food. Okay, so you get a cue your brain is anticipating pleasure. Now here we have three outcomes. First outcome is that the pizza tastes exactly what you expected it to be, so reality matches your expectations. Second possibility is that pizza is fantastic, phenomenal. It's so much better than what you thought, so reality exceeds expectations. And third is that the pizza isn't really good. It's too dry, too greasy, too something. So the outcome does not meet the expectations. Reality is worse. Now let's see what happens in your brain when those three scenarios play out. So you thought about how delicious the pizza will be in reality and it turned out to be amazing. This causes a spike of dopamine, a very high basic transmission. Second option, the pizza is exactly what you expected, delicious, but you're not surprised by anything. You got what you wanted, that's all. No dopamine release in this case. Business as usual. Third option, the pizza is not at all delicious. Your brain expected a reward, but it didn't get it. So now you have less dopamine than usual, meaning you feel sad, you feel disappointed, you feel demotivated, you never got the delicious pizza, but it feels like you sort of had it and it was taken away from you because in a way the idea of it you had and now the reality took away the idea. If you think about it, it relates to everything, relationships, jobs, Every single time when you have expectations and they don't meet the reality, it feels like something is taken away from you. And in reality, that's the case. You've lost dopamine. 
On that note, here is how social media, especially short form content such as Instagram and TikTok, use the simple biology to keep you locked on your phone. How short form social media platforms take advantage of the random intermittent reward. Or the little fact that your brain gets more dopamine, a spike of dopamine when you receive something good that you didn't expect. So you know how sometimes you are on your phone scrolling for a while, nothing interesting is happening, you're kind of bored. And then suddenly Instagram is sending you a notification of how many likes you got on your last post. Or finally, this really funny and colorful video is popping up on your screen. Well, those sudden pleasures, especially after boring content, feel really good. And because it's random and you never really know when the next hit will come, you are more likely to keep scrolling for a while because you are about to get the next hit. You just never know when. It's the same way how slot machines work and it's addictive. One easy way to fight this is make your display on your phone grayscale, like kill the color. It's boring already, it doesn't give you the same hit, so it's no longer so addictive to be on your phone and scroll. Actually, it's not even interesting, so not only you're not gonna be addicted, you're very likely to spend much less time on your phone doom scrolling. And I know we all struggle to keep our attention on long form content. So if you are still here watching, let me know in the comments what helped you stay until the end as I'm still figuring out my editing style. And in the next video, I'm gonna talk about dopamine deficit state and actionable strategies, how to regulate your dopamine. So come back for that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.